Chapter 20. When she came home, when she came in the house, the first thing Melody noticed were her father's muddy boots lying on the floor. Dad, she called. In here, Mel. What are you doing home, she asked, joining him in the kitchen where he was making himself a sandwich. In a nutshell, the camping trip got rained out. My car broke down on the way home and had to be towed to the shop, and I will never go anywhere that involves teenagers, tents, and canned beans again. How was your weekend? He meant to be funny, but Melody wasn't amused. There was something she needed to get off her chest. In a nutshell, she said, Nick and Grandpa got food poisoning, and I discovered that just because your father knows the definition of a word, it doesn't mean he knows how to apply it to his own life. Melody's father looked confused. You lost me, he said. Unilaterally means doing something without taking into account how another person might feel about it, right? Have I done something to hurt your feelings, Mel? That depends. Does sneaking around behind my back dating my teacher count, she asked. Melody watched the color drain from her father's face. Any hope that she might have had that she was mistaken about Miss Hogan and her father drained away too. She couldn't believe it. This was really happening. Miss Hogan was actually going to marry her father. How did you find out? He asked. I heard you talking to her on the phone. You called her honey. Then you lied and told me it was a wrong number, remember? Melody's father hung his head exactly the way Teeny Nelson had done when her mother had yelled at her for going into the bishop's yard without being invited first. I didn't want to tell you about the relationship until I was sure it was serious, Melody's father told her. I certainly didn't mean for you to find out like this. I'm so sorry, Mel. Melody wasn't ready to accept his apology. How could you do this to me, she asked. Don't you care about how I feel? Of course I do, said her father. To be honest, I expected you to be happy about this news. Just when Melody thought she couldn't feel any worse, her father had to go and say that. Was he so head over heels in love with Miss Hogan he had forgotten how Melody felt about her? Happy, she said, and she was practically yelling now. Why would I be happy? This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. You're ruining my life and you don't even care. Now wait a minute. Melody's father reached over and tried to touch her hand. Melody jerked it away. No, you wait a minute, she shouted. How could you think this would be okay with me? You didn't even ask. You just went ahead and did what you wanted to do without even thinking about how I'd feel. Why do you get to decide everything? How much TV I watch? What kind of cereal I eat? You even get to decide how much I know about my own mother. And now without even consulting me, you get to decide this? It's not fair. Melody couldn't hold back her tears any longer. Please don't cry, Mel said her father. Why shouldn't I cry, she said through her tears. You're going to marry Miss Hogan. Melody's father's jaw dropped. Miss Hogan, he said incredulously, is that who you think I've been seeing? Well, isn't it, asked Melody. Her father smacked his forehead with the heel of his hand. No wonder you're upset. I wouldn't do that to you, Mel, he said. Good grief, I wouldn't do that to me. Then why did Miss Hogan know you'd gone camping, asked Melody. Her nephew Kirk is on the debate team. Why was she whistling your song? What song, Melody's father asked. But Melody had already moved on to her next question, the most important one of all. If you're not going out with Miss Hogan, then who have you been seeing? Uh, Marianne McKenna. It took a minute for it to register. Mrs. McKenna asked Melody, but she's married. She was, but her husband passed away a few years ago. She kept his name out of respect. Melody had to ask again just to make sure she hadn't misunderstand, understood. So the person you called honey on the phone the other night wasn't Miss Hogan, it was Mrs. McKenna? Melody's father smiled. That's right. I love Mrs. McKenna, cried Melody, grabbing her father and hugging him tight. I know, he said, hugging her back. So do I. That night, the bishops ordered a pizza for dinner. Grandpa, who was feeling much better, came downstairs to join them, but he stuck to ginger ale and saltines just to be safe. He was almost as happy to hear about Mrs. McKenna as Melody had been. An excellent choice, son, he said, on both of your parts. The pizza arrived and Melody's father paid the delivery boy. As he carried the pizza into the dining room, he started whistling again. I guess it was just a coincidence that Miss Hogan was whistling that song yesterday, said Melody. But is there something special about You Are My Sunshine to you, Dad? Melody saw tears start to well up in his eyes. It was one of your mother's favorites, he said. She always sang it when she was happy. I hope wherever she is, she's singing it now. Me too, said Melody. After dinner, Melody and her father wrapped up the leftover pizza and tinfoil and put it in the freezer. <laughs> then they sat down together and had a long talk. She told him all about the quest she and Nick had gone on to find out who Honey might be, about her two visits to the Beehive, and about listening to the recording of her mother playing the piano, too. That's the tape you played at Mom's funeral, isn't it? She asked. How did you know about that? Her father replied. BB told me. She was there, and she said I was there, too. I'm sorry if it made you sad to listen to the tape. I'm not sorry, said Melody. I wish I could have met Mom, but at least now I know what her voice sounded like. I only wanted to protect you, said her father. 
I know, but I want to know who she is. I need to know. There are some videos up in the attic, her father told her. I'll bring them down and we can watch them together tomorrow if you want. It's Memorial Day, so there's no school on Monday. There's also a box of stuff I saved from when you were a baby, including a beautiful little pink blanket your mother crocheted for you. I wrapped you in that blanket the day you were born and put you in your mother's arms so she could say goodbye to you. Melody lay her head on her father's chest. She could hear his heart beating. She closed her eyes. This time, instead of red, she saw mossy greens and deep sea blues. Her father put his arms around her and they were sad together for a while. Promise me something, Melody said later when her father came in to say goodnight. No more secrets. I promise, he told her. That night, as Melody lay sleeping in her bed, her father climbed the narrow steps to the attic and brought down all the things he had promised to show Melody. Then he added one more thing to the pile, a small blue box which he had been keeping hidden in the back of a dresser drawer. He had told Melody there would be no more secrets and he intended to keep his promise.